What's going on, everyone? Welcome back to the show. So today we're going to take a look and a listen to Representative Moore. She's going to be talking about Social Security reform and a Social Security increase. She's going to be asking questions of the experts about how to reform Social Security. But first off, you guys can do me a favor. Please like the video, subscribe to the channel, hit that little bell notification, and then click all. By clicking all, you'll get notified anytime we post a video. We do daily videos here, so by clicking the bell notification, clicking all, you should be getting updated every day. And just a reminder, thank you for your support. I really appreciate it. And one more way to support us is by joining our membership, just click the join button below. You'll get customized emojis as well as custom badges. Okay, so let's go ahead and take a look and a listen to Representative Moore, talk about Social Security reform, and ask some questions of the experts. Here we go. Gentle lady from Wisconsin, Ms. Moore, you're now recognized. Thank you so much, and I am, am always delighted to talk about our premier program that uh, prevents seniors for, from living in poverty and particularly important for our disabled community, uh, women, people of color. I want to start out by thanking one of our witnesses, Mr. Goss, for diligently working with me and my staff and answering questions that we have given you in writing. I think it's important when we talk about uh, Mr. Chairman and Mr. Ranking Member, then we talk about Social Security, we talk about it in real terms, uh, that we really come to the table uh, coming together in, in good faith. And my concern is, is that it's not good faith to come to the table uh, scaring young people, uh, telling them not to rely on Social Security because it won't be there anymore. So many young people have bought into the idea that it's hopeless to ever rely on it or to, you know, that's not a realistic way of fixing it. Uh, it's not fair to come to the table and say to people the only way that we can fix it uh, is to cut benefits by 25 percent. Uh, you can't say that you're working toward a solution to say that we ought to r raise the retirement age. Um, you know, you look at all the gray hair up here. Uh, it's one thing for us to be doing this kind of work at our age. When I think about the people that I need to fix the gutters on my house, uh, I don't think any of them are going to make it uh, by increasing uh, the age. But one of the things that I just wanted uh, to review with you, Mr. Goss, there are lots of, you know, so there are many roads to the city. Uh, and uh, before I talk to you, I want to talk to Mr. Uh, Swagel. Uh, you shared with my colleague, Ms. Sanchez, that you thought immigration reform was a real vital way to uh, improve the, the receipts, uh, the payroll receipts. And you also mentioned, uh, as Mr. Swigert well knows, that we have uh, decreased population and we're, we're facing a fertility crisis. And so, you know, we have several approaches to immigration, but is it, I, I once read the CBO report that within a, within a window of a 10-year budget window, we could see a $1 trillion increase minimum if we were to have some sort of immigration reform. Am I remembering that correctly? Uh, yes, what we've said is that the immigration surge we project from 21 to 2026 will result in about a trillion dollars of additional revenue. We're, we're working further on that, so we'll have an update of that soon, but it's so still that, the That's only trillion. five years, a trillion dollars. Over the 10-year over the period. Over the 10-year period. The ten five year years period. of immigrants over 10 So I years. just wanted to remind us of that. Um, Mr. Goss. So that's actually huge if you think about it. I mean, there's, he's saying, um, you know, that's uh, Dr. Dr. Swagel's saying that over a 10-year span, if you reform uh, immigration and you were to allow people who are work, you know, who are, are living in this country right now, they're documented, they're living in this country and they're working. If they're working and they're paying it to the payroll contribution, that could be a trillion dollars of extra revenue for Social Security. I mean, that's amazing. That's a lot of money when you think about it. Social Security spends about one point five trillion dollars every year to pay out benefits. So you would have a trillion dollars. Now, it would take 10 years, but still, that's, that's a lot of money that we're talking about. What's $100 billion every year? You sent me a really 
long memo. Be careful of what you ask for. People actually might write you back. Um, and uh, so what I asked you to analyze with was how could we maintain the solvency of this program, but yet be humane and recognize that people were getting older, that people were losing benefits because they uh, five years of their lives have gone toward childcare rearing women who never uh, don't get that accredited, uh, people over 80, uh, kids who lost their benefit. There have been so many teary-eyed members of Congress that have talked about how they were able to go to college after their dad died. Um, and so I propose restoring all those benefits and still extending the life of Social Security by 24 years. I have 42 seconds. Take it away, sir, and sort of review this thick memo for us. Well, th thank you very much. Uh, there's no question that uh, we can maintain the benefits we have now, but we do need more revenue in the future uh, because of what's happened with uh, the changing earnings distribution and the changing uh, number of working age people versus retirement age people in our country, largely because of the, the birth rate dropping. We do have a situation where to maintain the level of benefits we have scheduled in current law, we will need more. So, I mean, it's a modest change in benefits. Like right now, we have a combined contribution level of 12.4%. If we were to increase it by 13%, payroll and employee, that is how we achieve that 24-year uh, increase. So, you know, you know, you pay a penny today for benefits for 25 more years. Is that, am I correct? That's right. And let me just also go back to immigration that you mentioned, which is so important. Uh, we have less than 4 million births per year in this country, but our net immigration is on the order of 1 million. That's an enormous help in terms of maintaining our population in the future. Uh, we've had such a drop in births because of the birth rate since 1965 that having elevated immigration would be a big help in maintaining our population and the age distribution, which would have enormous ramifications. Okay, so that was Representative Moore talking about Social Security reform, asking some questions of the experts, and I think we learned some really good information there as far as you, know, you, you heard about immigration and the 10-year, the $1 trillion, is, the CBO is is estimating that's how much revenue they could bring in. And then you heard the chief actuary. And so you heard Mr. Goss just talk about the way, the only real way to fix Social Security right now is bringing in more revenue. Okay, so he is saying that. He's not saying, oh, we can just raise the full retirement age. No, he's saying we need more revenue. And the only way that you're going to get more revenue is by either raising the cap on people making over 400000 or 250000 or wherever, you know, you want to you know, whatever uh, metric you want to use, or we're looking at a situation where you're going to have to raise the payroll contribution across the board for everybody who is currently working. And that's what Representative Moore was uh, kind of alluding to, saying if we raise it uh, from 12.4% to 13% across the board, then that would be uh, something that would help extend the program out for 24 years, which realistically, we probably want to extend it out more than just 24 years because... Just by saying 24 years doesn't mean it's a guarantee it's 24 years because the economy will go up and down. If the economy goes down, we could be looking at a situation where that 24 years becomes 20 years or 18 years. So it could, it could be uh, de decreased much faster. So we want to extend it out for like 75 years, and then we won't have to worry about it for – we won't have to worry about it at all for another 50 years, and then after that maybe we'll see – uh, the you know the trust fund depending on the economy the trust funds uh, being depleted a little faster but we need more revenue that is the bottom line and if we can't get that revenue we're not going to be able to reform social security and part of the reason that lawmakers are really they don't really want to move on this is because they know that they know that we need a revenue stream and the only way to get that revenue stream is to raise the payroll contribution they know that. And they don't want to be the ones that raise taxes on the American people. And so that's why they don't want to do it. But if you were to be honest with the American people, and I've said this over and over again, 
and some lawmakers feel this way. Representative Larson is one of them. If you were to be honest with the American people and tell them, look, we're all going to have to contribute a little bit more so we can secure and provide an expansion to Social Security benefits for years to come. And the way that we do it is by raising the payroll contribution. That's the only way that we can do it. So I want to know what you guys think, so let me know in the comments below. If you like this video, please give me a thumbs up. Please subscribe for more, and I'll talk to you in the next one. Bye.